so whenever we are learning a new language see as i said like if we uh, try to get the examples of known languages then it will be very easy to learn not only language any subject if you consider if you are learning new subject as much as possible try to get the examples of known subjects so it feels very easy to learn okay with respect to any subject you can consider not only with computer science so whatever subjects you have like economics business studies and in case of science physics chemistry and all so you can consider the example of uh, any subject which you know already okay so we feel easy to understand the subject as much as possible and i'm telling because sometimes what happens we may not get the examples of known subject that means exactly we cannot give the example and even real world examples also okay two things are there like getting the examples of known subject and one more thing is getting the examples of real world okay because uh, see when when we talk about technology technology is not real world real in the sense we are using in real world but it has come from the virtual world that is called a software world so when we take the examples of real world when we take the examples of english language then we can understand the things very easily okay so in english when we when we have started learning english the steps to learn english are alphabets words uh, sentences and paragraphs so first step of learning english language is alphabets that is capital letters and small letters okay and second step is framing the words third and uh, third step is framing the sentences last step is paragraph framing the paragraphs okay in english we have two things like written english and spoken english in almost all regional languages we have these two things so spoken and written but when it comes to programming language so it's also language okay when i say programming language language means what medium to communicate okay just like english we can learn programming language so here also we have the steps so first step is character set okay so second step of learning programming language is tokens in english we call words third step is so statements okay so in english we call it sentences here you just use the technical term okay see if you tell sentence yes it is correct when you look at the program statement you will come to yes it is sentence but technically it is a statement so we have to call it as statement it is meaningful 100% correct program statement and here we use the word sound but we have to call it as tokens okay token statements the last one is program so this is the last step of learning the uh, programming language so when we come to this step from this step we keep on learning the program so till we reach this step so we have to look at the theoretical part okay so in other subjects also we have noticed like before we go to practical things like in mathematics before we go to the problems first we should know the theory definitions okay then formulas definitions formulas and how the formula is derived after all these things then we can go for the problems where directly if you go for the problems we can understand but somewhere we get stuck there okay we you may get a question how this formula is derived and what is the definition of this uh, problem like that we get a question so what we do first we go to the theoretical part then we go for the uh, problem similarly here also so these are all theoretical part next last step we go for the program so in, in case of character set we have four types first uh, sorry four classifications see first classification is uh, which um, which is nothing but all capital letters and small letters so this is the first classification okay all capital letters and small letters comes under the character set that is the first classification second classification of character set is all digits so i can say 0 to 9 this is the second classification okay of the character set third classification is all symbols so which we come across on the keyboard all symbols okay alphabets that is capital letters a to z and small letters a to z digits that is from 0 to 9 symbols all symbols like uh, parentheses braces brackets plus minus dollar dash we have many symbols so whenever i come across those symbols i will be telling the technical name for those symbols okay and last step is backslash character constant okay see the name itself tells it start it should start with backslash okay backslash character character meaning anything like uh, capital letters small letters digits symbols see whenever i use the character three things should come into our mind uh, first uh, thing is all the letters capital letters and small letters first category second category is digits 0 to 9 third category is all the symbols so when i say character uh, you should not think only about alphabets that is capital letters and small letters 
three things should come into your mind. Capital letters, small letters, first category, second category, digits, third category is all symbols. So backslash character constant, it should start with backslash. Backslash means this is the symbol of backslash. It is there on the keyboard. Okay, don't get confused here. This is backslash and this is the forward slash. Okay, so people should notice the difference correctly. So in case of backslash character constant, you have to put backslash. After the backslash, you have to write one character and that is already present in <coughs> C++ software. Okay, only those characters you have to use. For example, n is there. N means it stands for new line. Definitions are there. Okay. N means it stands for new line. And if I say T, it stands for tab, horizontal tab. So I will tell you the program, I will tell you in detail how it works. Okay. So this is about character constant. Sorry, character set. So set of characters used to write a C program. See, just like how we learn alphabets in English, similarly in programming language, we have to learn character set. That's the first step of learning programming. Language. See, those who are not attended uh, previous classes, uh, I hope you people are getting the things. It's not a problem. Okay. So, I'm, I'm, once again, I'm explaining the first step. Okay. Character set. Next. Coming to the second step. See, in case of English, what we call these are the words. Okay. In English, we call words. In programming language, we call it as tokens. Okay. So, here also, if I start writing the token, you will come to know how we can compare with words. Okay. So here also, here it is a token. So in English, when we look at one complete paragraph, in one paragraph, I can say sentence is the unit of a paragraph. Sentence is the unit of a paragraph. Words are the unit of the sentences. Understood? Words are the unit of the sentences. Similarly, here, if you consider the program, one complete program, tokens are the unit of a program. In this way, you can understand. In English, sentences and words are the unit of the paragraph. Here, tokens are the words of a unit of a program. Even statements are also unit of a program. Okay. When you compare word with paragraph, okay. So when you compare word with paragraph, so uh, those are the smallest unit. Just a minute. Hello, sir. Okay, now, now they are saying. Okay, fine. Sir. Okay, okay. Fine. Thank you. Well, people wait just for a minute. Eh? Uh, actually, I should enroll two more students now. Just wait for a minute. Uh, so, one student, I accepted the enroll request. Please give a message in the chat box who joined newly. I think our comes, you know. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Okay, we will continue. Uh, okay, so uh, if we if we want to understand the tokens, how we can understand this? Like tokens are nothing but words here. Okay, in in some cases even we come across symbols also in case of tokens. But just we will compare with the English. So words are if we compare with entire paragraph or if we compare with like two three pages. If I have written two, three pages of notes, uh, if I say, uh, if I want to tell about words, I can say words are the smallest unit or individual unit of the these two pages or one paragraph. Okay. Similarly, here also tokens are the smallest unit or individual unit of a program. So that is the definition of token. Token is the smallest unit or individual unit of a program. Okay. Next, in case of English. 
for words we have the classifications for every word we cannot call by one name or one uh, like type there are different types of words and we, we can give the names like noun pronoun adverb adjective conjunction preposition article so these are all the words see in case, in case of articles uh, if i just say ye uh, i can say this is also a word because if i say like uh, this is a book okay if i say this is a book it's a meaningful sentence okay but uh, i cannot say a is not a word it is a word if i remove a we get the meaning but if i want correct sentence i can say this is a book and if i come across vowels like for example an elephant right so here also an is the article so articles are also words that means if i write single letter also in english in some cases it becomes words right so in tokens also we come across single letters there also we have to consider it as token if i tell one complete word which should contain uh, more than one letter then only we should consider it as word nothing like that even a single letter is also a word see so just you see this is a book a is a word okay and uh, the meaning of that a is article an is the article like that okay so in case of uh, programming language also in case of tokens we come up, if we come across single letter that also we can put in tokens category that i will tell you okay next say how we have classifications in english like noun pronoun adjective verb and all in programming language also for tokens we have the classifications okay so i can say classifications of tokens or types of tokens classifications or categories or types of tokens see uh, classifications are so first one keywords second identifiers third i can say variables four constants so for keyword one more word is there it is called as it is also called as reserved word so we come to know why it is called as a reserved fixed it is constant for constants one more technical term is there literals next fifth i can say operators sixth one punctuators See, if you if you suppose if you say like first uh, four categories, that's enough actually because uh, punctuators means in your syllabus they are added. When we when I start writing the program, you will come to know uh, how we can uh, for which things we can tell as punctuators you can know. So first four things main important keywords, identifiers, variables, and the constant. Even operators also we can use in the program. Okay. Now we will go step by step. So we will uh, try to know the definition of keyword, identifiers, variables, and all. Okay. keywords or reserved words so in english language we have the dictionary okay in dictionary for a word meanings will be there so if i want to know the meaning of the particular word so i have to go with the dictionary with the help of dictionary i can know so in case of english when we write the sentence if we don't know the meaning of particular word we will look and we will look into the dictionary and we get the meaning and that meaning we will match in the sentence we will try to understand that particular sentence so we, we, we don't have any rights to change the meanings of the uh, words in the dictionary okay even we will not change also only thing is we are using and one more thing we will not add any extra word to the english language also if we want to add Uh, like for any subject not only with english for any subject if you want to add any formula or any new thing it should be universally accepted 
then only you can add for example if you want to add any uh, mathematical formula for mathematics it should be universally accepted okay if we have that much knowledge it's okay you can do it but we don't have that much knowledge adding one new word to the dictionary or adding one new formula to the mathematics uh, subject like that okay so right now what we can understand is we don't change the meanings of the words in dictionary plus whatever the meaning is there for the words in the dictionary with the same meaning we have to use in the english sentence depending on the context it may change but the meaning which is present in the dictionary will not change we will not uh, modify the dictionary for example if you consider the word sell okay see this has got a different meaning if you consider with respect to uh, battery battery cell like uh, for clock we put a battery cell that that meaning is different okay if the cell is there then it starts working in watch also we put a cell but if you consider with this word same word with respect to human body so that meaning changes right okay but both meanings are present in dictionary we will not modify the dictionary what we do depending on the context we change the meaning we change the meaning means that meaning itself changes with respect to human body it is a like i can say with, without cell human body does not exist right because in every uh, living organism cells are present okay but with respect to uh, like watch or clock consider without which it, it will not work so like that the meaning changes okay but we don't have rights to modify the meanings in the dictionary similarly in case of keywords or reserved reserved words in programming language in programming language some words are fixed with their meaning where we can, we will not change the meanings of those words so those words are called as keywords or reserved words see the name itself is reserved reserved means what fixed so if we we say reservation we have done reservation uh, in train or bus that means our seat is fixed nobody will sit there if they sit also we can uh, tell them to get up right similarly here also reserved means fixed no uh, it will not change similarly meanings of the words will not change when we use in the program so those words are called as keywords definition is keywords are the words in a program uh, in a c++ programming language which have predefined meaning keywords which have predefined meaning those are also called as reserved words and so some examples i will tell you <clears throat> not all because uh, actually in standard c++ there are 63 keywords uh, for first pvc and second pvc what we have come across what i have saw in all the chapters and programs so the maximum is 32 keywords that's so all not more than that so some keywords like if for example if i use the word int or if i use the word uh, if or else these are like keywords we should know the meaning also so once we know the meaning we can use in our program so the meaning of int is it is called integer so integer means the values which will be having like 5 50 121 whole numbers without fractional part i should not write 5.25 or 15.0 121.23 you should not write only have to write whole number that is the meaning of integer so uh, we, we can represent these numbers by using the keyword called as in and you have to write in lower case letters that is the rule in keyword you have to write in lower case letters so all the letters i and p all the three letters you have to write in lower case letters then coming to the if see if is a keyword the meaning of if is again from english only it is derived so in english if i want to give reason okay then we use this word uh, if so, suppose if you if your parents tell some work you may say like uh, you may ask your parents if you give some money i will go like that so just an example i am giving i am giving uh, now when offline class starts you can give a simple reason like if if it doesn't rain then i will go to college so like that right if it rains match is cancelled so for what purpose we are using if telling the reason in english and in programming language the same word we should call it as a condition meaning is same but we should change the word that's a condition whenever we apply condition in a program then we use the word if okay same concept of english then coming to the else see to understand this keyword in english we have the word called as otherwise same concept here also if it rains if it rains today match is cancelled otherwise match is conducted similarly in uh, programming language also we use the same thing just tell me
okay so now we came to know some uh, meanings of the words like uh, integer if for condition for reason to tell the reason for else otherwise okay that means if the condition is not satisfied then we go for the otherwise word like if it rains today match is cancelled otherwise match is conducted like that okay so these, these are some of the meanings of the keywords so still there are many keywords so uh, topic by topic we will discuss about the keywords okay the simple thing is it is a word which have predefined meaning in programming language where we will not change the meaning and the rule is we have to write in lowercase letters okay then next concept is identifiers See, this word again, we have to consider from English language identification or identity or identify. So, where we use the word in English, if I want to identify some object in the real world, uh, I, should, I should tell by the name, name of that object. For example, laptop, mobile, chalk piece, duster, chair. So, for a particular object, I'm, there is a name. By that name, we have to identify. And in particular, if you consider the mobiles, companies are there, company name will be there. All mobiles are not same. Like I can say Samsung mobile or uh, Vivo mobile, like that, right? So company name will be there. So if I want to identify any object in real world, then I should know the name of that object. Simply I cannot say object, hey, you that object, that object, that object, this object means which object, you have to mention that object, right? So that object is identified by its name. Similarly, in programming language, when we start writing the program, we come across programming elements. Remember, when we start writing the program, we come across programming elements. See, there are many programming elements. Some examples, if I want to give, see, variable. Variable is one of the programming elements. And array, see, array is a chapter actually. But we have one chapter. It is a programming element. Function. Okay. So function is one of the programming element. Then uh, structure, this is one of the programming element. So we have many, many programming elements. Okay. For all these things, I should give the name. For this programming element, variable name. So I can call it variable name, array name, uh, function name, okay, structure name in this way. For all the programming elements, we are giving the names. In real world, for all the objects, we are giving names, right? Whether it is living being or non-living being, we are giving the names for the particular object. Similarly, for programming elements, we are giving the name. What are the programming elements? These are the programming elements by which we can write the program. Variables, arrays, functions, structures, these are the programming elements. When I give the names for these programming elements, that is called as identifier. Okay. Identifier is a name given to the programming element. Identifiers are the names given for the programming elements such as variables, arrays, functions, structures, etc. Still, there are many programming elements. Okay. So, in simple words, what I can say is identifier is a name given for programming element. Okay. Now, when we give the names for the programming elements, okay. <coughs> Hmm. See, identifier, the word we have got from English, okay. identification. Identify means what? If I want to represent, if I want to indicate some object, I have to indicate by that name, that particular name. Similarly, in English, in programming language also, we have, when we start writing the program, we have the programming elements. Program. If I want to indicate the programming element, I should give the name for the programming element. Okay. See, actually what are these programming elements? I will tell you in detail. Just to remember, there are programming elements when we start writing the program. Variable name is one programming element. Array name is one programming element. Okay. If I want to give the names for these programming elements, then I should use the concept called as identifier. So identifier is a name given to the programming element or identifiers are the names given to the programming elements such as variables, arrays, functions, etc. See, in real world, for a living being and for non-living being, if I am giving the name, we are following some rule, right? We are following some rule. Uh, I cannot uh, call, I cannot give the name as a chalk piece for mobile or for mobile, I cannot call it as chalk piece. So there is some rule for the particular object.
okay so similarly in programming uh, language also we have some rules to give the names for the programming language that we will see now Yes, Veda Murthy, I didn't get your question. You just speak and tell. Why can't we change the name of which of keyword or identifier? Why can't we change the name of a ah, keywords means fixed. Okay, as I said in English. Uh, can we change the meanings of the uh, dictionary words? Can we change the meanings of the dictionary words? No, right? Yeah. We cannot. Similarly, in programming language, we cannot change the meanings of the keywords. So, words with meanings are fixed. Only thing is we can use in the program depending on the situation. So, this word is important depending on the situation. In English, I have given example, right? Depending on the context, because the word cell, they have different meaning. When, you, when I put in a watch or a clock, it has got some different meaning. If I refer to the human body, it has got some different meaning. Similarly, here also in programming language, depending on the situation, uh, we can use the keywords, but meaning are fixed. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> so identifier is a name you just remember this this one word it helps a lot for identifier is a name okay now if i want to give the name i have to follow some rules here so that rule is like okay. first rule starting character should not be a Digit. Starting character should not be a digit. So, what is the meaning of this? When you give one name, uh, for example, what we can consider is like animal name. See, for animal, if I say like dog, okay, so just one word I am telling. Okay, when you tell this word, what they are doing in all these three places, three characters, D is one character, O is one character, G is one character. Okay, in all these three places, starting character you should see. Starting character you should not use a digit. That there. Later you can use it. After writing one character, you can use any number of digits. Like that. After using the word, you can say dog one or dog one two three. I can use like that. But starting character should not be digit. Starting character, then what it should be? It should be. If I if I if I, if I should not write character like. Uh, See 123 ABC. I cannot write like this. 123 ABC. Because this you consider it as complete word. One word is considered without blank space. 123 ABC. One complete word. Okay. So if you are considering one complete word, then you see the starting character. So what is the starting character? One. Then this complete word is wrong. For this complete word, you cannot call that as an identifier. Understood? So at the starting point, you should not write the digit 0 to 9, you should not use any digit. Then if I want to make it as a correct identifier, what I should do is you have to write like this, A, B, C, 1, 2, this is correct. I said starting character, it can be capital letter, small letter or underscore, capital letter, small letter or underscore. Later you can use any number of digits. Okay, starting character should not be digit, it can be it can be a, it can be letters. Letters means that is A to Z, it is capital letters or small letters or underscore. Say one more symbol we have come across. Say as I said, whenever I come across these symbols, I will tell you, I will tell you the technical terms. See this symbol is present on the keyboard. On one key it is present minus symbol that is hyphen symbol and underscore. If you type that key without shift key, it will print hyphen or minus. If you type with the, uh, shift key, then it will print underscore. Okay, this is underscore. So if you just write like this, it becomes minus symbol. Okay, it is underscore. So starting character can be uh, capital letters or small letters or underscore. Okay, so this is correct. A B C one two three. One two three A B C is not correct. 
or even we can say underscore a b c one two three. So this is also correct. We can use either underscore or certain character, capital letter or small letter. Okay. So this is the first rule. Second rule: <coughs> blank spaces not allowed. Blank spaces not allowed. Blank spaces not allowed means how we can give the example? If you consider the human beings, please. like if I say like uh, say for example, Ravi Kumar. So this is wrong. Because after the word Ravi, I have left one space here. Then I am writing the last name, first name, surname, or first name, last name, whatever you consider. So this is not called as an identifier. It has got meaning in real world. Okay, don't uh, think that it has not got meaning in real world. Also. In real world, it has got meaning. So while we call the person, we will call it Ravi Kumar Kamir like that. Okay. But in programming language, according to the rules of identifiers, this is not a correct identifier. In order to make this as a correct identifier, what I can do is either you write like Ravi Kumar without a space, without space you have to write. Okay, without space you write, or with space if you are writing, put underscore in there. Ravi underscore Kumar. I think in Gmail ID you will use it. Well, you create the Gmail ID, uh, I hope so you will use, right? So, Ravi underscore Kumar. So, this is correct identifier. Understood? And when you are looking at the second rule, that should satisfy first rule also. It, uh, if you go to the second rule, you should not think that first rule, uh, we should not consider. First rule also, it should satisfy. That means, if you are writing uh, here a digit, say for example, 5 or 7, again this becomes wrong. 5 Ravi Kumar or 7 Ravi Kumar, that is wrong. Correct? So, first rule also it should satisfy, second rule also it should satisfy when we are going for the second rule. Okay. Next. Coming to the third rule. Keywords cannot be used as identifiers. Keywords cannot be used as identifiers means we have 32 keywords, right? I think in the notes I have given uh, keywords list, you can look at the keywords list. You can memorize it or uh, chapter by uh, topic by topic you can remember or program by program you can, however you feel comfortable, you can do it. If you if you have the capacity to memorize, you can do it, okay? See, in, in uh, 32 keywords, one of the keyword is called as IF, if, as I said, right now, IF or else. These are the two keywords. I cannot say these two are identifiers because it comes in keywords list. If it is coming in keywords list, then you cannot put in identifiers list. Understood? So whenever you are using identifiers, you should be careful that don't use the keywords. If suppose if you are using the keyword by mistake, okay, what happens is if you change from small letter to capital letter, that is lower case to upper case, then it becomes the identifier. But generally programmers will not do like that. That is, instead of writing IF, if I write Capital letter I, small letter F, or small letter I, capital letter F, or both capital letters. You just see the difference. Capital letter I, small letter F, or small letter I, capital letter F, or capital letter I, capital letter F. All these are identifiers. Understood? Because I am changing. Okay, meaning will be changed. If you are changing from uh, lower case letter to upper case letter, small letter to capital letter, it's changed the meaning. Meaning means, now it is not called as identifier, it is called as, sorry, now it is not called as keyword, it is called as identifier. But generally, programmers will not do that, you people also should not do that. When you start writing the program, you should not use any keywords as identifiers. We can use, but we should not use. So, that's way, uh, that is how, uh, the good way of writing the program, okay. So, capital letter again, small letter, or I, uh, small letter A, capital letter, or both capital letters. So, meaning will change. It is called as uh, identifiers, not the keyword. So, you may get a question. Uh, if we change the uh, lower, uh, upper, lower case to upper case in case of identifiers, what happens? Whether we get error, we will not get error. It will change the meaning. It becomes the identifier. So, only they are telling this rule. Keywords cannot be used as identifiers. Cannot be means we can use, but it is not a good, good habit to use it while writing the program. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I'll give you the notes. Don't worry. See, whatever I am explaining till today, I think uh, everything is there in the notes. What I have given. Okay, two pages of notes. Still we are in that. Okay, I'll give. Don't worry. If I give uh, whole chapter at a time, what you people do? You go through the topics. You may get confusion. So once I complete the explanation of that particular topic, then I will give the notes. Okay, don't worry. So now this is the. Uh, I can say this is the. The third rule. Okay. Now coming to the fourth rule. Fourth rule is like in case of identifiers, we can use capital letters, small letters, and symbols. Symbols means only one symbol is allowed. That symbol is underscore. Only this symbol is allowed. So I can say uh, only only underscore is allowed. All other symbols are not allowed. If you consider remaining all the symbols like plus, hash, dollar, any symbol you consider, comma, embedded comma, double quotes, those symbols are not allowed. Only underscore is allowed. So only you see Ravi underscore Kumar is correct. If suppose if I write Ravi dollar Kumar, this is wrong. You cannot use any symbol except underscore. So four rules is. Symbols except underscore is not allowed. Only underscore symbol is allowed. So these are the rules of identifiers, and this is one of the important topic uh, as well as the question. So what is an identifier? What are the rules to write an identifier? So what is an identifier? One more question. What are the rules to write an identifier? Three more question. So uh, uh, combination of those two questions, like what is an identifier? Give an example. Write the rules for to write uh, to frame an identifier. Five more questions. So like that, it's very important. Hey, regarding notes, you can uh, personally send to me message. Okay, I, so you send me uh, to my number. Okay, don't worry. So we'll discuss in the uh, send to my personal number. We'll discuss. Okay, don't worry. So now uh, this is about identifiers. <coughs> I hope people got about identifier. Right? Any doubts regarding uh, keywords and identifiers? If you have any doubts, you can ask. No doubts, sir. Okay, fine. So you move further. So in case of tokens, so first one what we have discussed is keywords, or we can call it as reserved words. Second one uh, that is identifiers. So just now we have discussed. Okay. See, identifiers is one of the important, very 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 important. I can say very to the power of very infinite times important topic because further topics wherever we go, variables, constants. Okay. Uh, even for further chapters like arrays, functions, everywhere we have we are applying this concept, identifier concept. Rules of identifiers we are applying in every topic. Okay, so it's very important topic. So if you have still if you have any doubt in rules, just you ask. Okay, so if possible today I will give the uh, notes of the rules uh, to frame an identifier. Okay, if possible I will give. So if you don't have any notes, we will move further. See so next token is variables. We will move to the topic called as variables. See, when we start using the computer, what we do generally with the help of mouse or with the help of keyboard, we start operating, right? Uh, for example, if we, with the help of uh, keyboard, if you operate, if suppose if you are using the calculator, when you open the laptop or PC or uh, mobile, if you open the calculator, if you want to calculate uh, something like if I want to calculate, let's say 15 plus 25, some value I have to calculate. What we do generally, we type the number 15, then we type the number 20 plus symbol, then 25. Okay, this will give, give the result as 40. Yes. 
So when you type the values from the keyboard or from the mobile, what happens is when you type 15 from the keyboard, this 15 will be stored in computer memory. This you have to remember. 15 will be stored in computer memory. When you type plus, this also stored in computer memory. Again, when you type 25, this is also stored in computer memory. So after that, we give you the result that is 40. So this also stores in computer memory. The meaning of this is whatever we type in from the keyboard when you are using uh, laptops or PC or when you are using mobile, so it will be stored in memory, mobile memory or computer memory. So when it stores in computer memory, what happens is like computer will come to know where it has stored. It is not a problem with computer, it is problem with us. That means when I type 15, when it stores in computer memory, I don't know where it is stored. See, best example I will give you, uh, say I am teaching for you, okay, you people are listening, I say computer definition. So computer is an electronic machine that accepts input data, process it and gives the output. That is stored in your brain, right? If I ask where it is stored, even you people cannot tell. In which part of the brain it is stored, even you people cannot tell, okay? That is, when I type from something from the keyboard, I cannot say where it is stored. I can say it is stored in computer memory. So when I speak something, if you people listen, you can say it is stored in brain, but in which part of the brain it is stored, even you cannot tell. Similarly, when I type some value from the keyboard, I can say it is stored in memory, but where it is stored, I cannot tell. But if I want to know it, where it is stored, then I have to indicate that memory location by name. Okay, understood. See, computer memory you can consider like this. So this is the just a rough diagram. Not exactly it will be like this because a computer memory means uh, two types of memories are there: primary memory and secondary memory. RAM. I think you people have heard, heard this word: RAM, random access memory. In mobile also you come to know, when you want to purchase new mobile, you will see about features of mobile that, that is 4GB RAM, 6GB RAM, that is, one, that is one type of memory. And another type of memory is like hard disk, secondary memory, permanent storage memory. So now we will consider just the RAM, okay, that is primary memory. So uh, in laptops or PC, uh, if you look at the RAM slot, if you open the CPU and see, there will be a RAM slot. But on that RAM slot, you uh, sorry, RAM itself, we cannot say where it is stored. For that purpose, what we do while writing the program, we should know where it is stored. Why? Because, see, if I give one item for you, if I give like pen or a uh, book, and if I tell you to keep in a home, what you people will do? You will go to home and keep it in particular place. You just, uh, you people just will not throw in the home, just throwing in the storeroom or throwing in the hall. You will not do. Why? Because if I want to take next time, next day, you should know no, where it is stored. If you uh, in home, if there is a storeroom, if you just put in a storeroom, just you throw it. In storeroom also, don't keep in particular place, you just throw it. Lot of things will be there. Next time if I ask, give me the item, you should keep on searching. For you people only, if you want, you should search. Similarly, in computer, when you store values in the computer memory, computer, uh, just like uh, what I said, it will not just throw in the memory. It will know where it is stored. Okay, where it stores, it will be knowing. So that part is called as address, okay. In in real world also, if I say where is your home, you will tell the address, right? You, you should not say my home is in Arth, my home is in Ballari, that we know. But where it is, you will tell the address similarly. When you say 50, it will be stored like this, in this location. So these are called as locations of memory, locations or addresses of memory. This is very important, addresses of memory or locations, similarly 25. Okay. So, 20, uh, when, when I type 25, it will throw in the location or addresses of memory. Okay. The next thing is, computer knows where it is stored. This concept you try to understand. Computer knows where it is stored. But if I want, if me, if that means if user wants to know what we have to do. If user wants to know what we have to do. We have to remember this address. Remembering the computer address is not so easy. First point, remembering the computer addresses is not so easy. I will tell you why it is not easy. In order to remember, in order to know where it is stored, I have to use the concept of variable. I have to use the concept of variable. Variable means it is a name. See, again, we are coming back to the identifier. Identifier is a name, I said, right? Variable is also a name. Variable is a name given to a computer memory 
variable is the name given to the computer remote location for example if you consider the pin for this location i will give name as pc for this location i will give name as xyz and 40 40 is also stored in memory for this location i will give name as say for example pqr like this so these are all identifiers in data we will discuss in the next class so this is just a basic thing about variable in data we will discuss in the next class okay Okay, fine. <laughs> so we'll discuss in the next class. So regarding notes, once I complete the particular topic, we will uh, discuss. Uh, I will send the notes. Don't worry about the notes. And I will not send whole chapter at a time so that you people should not get confusion. Whenever I complete the topics, I will be sending the notes. You just copy that notes on that particular day itself. You will not get burden and you will not get confusion at all. Okay. And actually, as per my knowledge and as per our teaching, uh, I think so, you people don't require a textbook, but still, if you want to read the textbook, you can purchase a textbook and read. But examination point of view, you follow the notes, that's enough, more than enough. If you follow the notes, that's enough. If you want, if you, for knowledge purpose, or if you have the habit of reading the textbook from first line of the chapter till last line of the chapter, that is actually a good habit. You can read it, but for examination purpose, for test purpose, you can follow the notes. Okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, we'll end the class. So I will send the cover photo of the textbook in the WhatsApp. Okay.